Hi everybody, this is Gregor from Personas, and today I want to show you three of my favorite default preset settings for Plugins in Studio One. Let's go. And I'd like to begin today with the Impact XT because that is an instrument where the default preset is quite important, I feel, and that becomes apparent whenever I read comments of you guys, for example, in my Tracks and Channels video. There have been quite a couple of people pointing out that as they're dragging in Impact XT from the browser, what they don't want to see is that they get several mixer channels for this one track that they're creating. And while I really like that because this allows me to compose all of my drums in just one pattern while still having dedicated control over each of the individual elements such as, you know, the kick drums, the claps, the percussions at the hi hats and so forth, this might not be handy in every situation, especially if you're just dragging in an Impact XT for some very quick samples. But this can be so easily adjusted. So let's just go to the instrument editor right now and just make sure that we set all of these outputs here on our kit to output one. Just click on the first pad and then click on the last pad while holding down shift. Now just set all of these to follow stereo output one instead. Now you see all of these get updated. Do the same thing for any other banks. I think in this case I only have uh, two banks here. And that's pretty much it. Now you can go into the channel list, just untick every other additional output, save that as your default preset. And next time you're gonna drag that into your song, you'll see that you only get one channel of Impact XT created. So this is what a lot of people want when they add a quick instance of Impact XT, and this is exactly how you would get it. Okay, next up, I'd really like to show you my favorite default preset for the Pro EQ. As you might know, the Pro EQ is our equalizer that comes in Studio One, and that's probably one of the inset effects that you're going to need the most by far on any audio channel, bus channel, virtual instrument, and so forth. So let's just go ahead and drag that into our song. And the way I like to go about this is that I want to prepare the values that I need to adjust the most and make them the most accessible. So for example, pretty much always are going to need some kind of low cut, meaning a high pass filter, or a high cut, meaning a low pass filter. And then I would probably set my low cut to 24 dB per octave at around 50 Hertz or so. That's usually a good starting point. And then perhaps I want to have the high cut at around 16K or so. And now I'm gonna disengage these and anytime I need them after dragging in the Pro EQ, I could just enable them and I have a low cut at the correct or mostly correct frequency, save for the high cut. I also like to do this for the low end. So if I need a bit of a low end boost that's prepared and ready to go, if I need to get rid of a little bit of this muddiness, then I like to have, um, you know, a little bit of an attenuation at around 300 Hertz. And if I need to boost the mid range a bit, I like to do that at the range of about 1.5K, so sort of around here. And I also like to have a high shelf available whenever I need it. And of course, I'm not gonna use all of these at once. I'm just gonna disable them just in case I need them. Now I'm gonna click here to update the default preset. And next time I'm dragging in this Pro EQ into my session and I need to boost the low end, I can just enable it here and I already have the correct Q factor set that I like, the correct frequency band set that I like, and it just saves me a couple of extra steps in most cases. And if it doesn't, then I still have access to all the other awesome presets, of course. And my third default preset setting that I wanna show you is from the level meter. You all know probably that LUFS metering has become very important, especially in the day and age of streaming services. So it's really handy that you have an R128 conforming LUFS meter with EBU plus 18 norm directly built into Studio One's level meter. What's even better is that you can expand it here in the mixer with a single click and then you see the LUFS value displayed directly as well as the LU value. Now, to save this entire configuration as it is now, simply go to store as default preset right here. And what's so great about this is that Studio One remembers the expanded state of the level meter inside of the default preset. So as I'm adding this now from the browser, I get a direct LUFS meter for all or any of my channels. Isn't that great? I love it. I hope that my examples inspire you to build your very own default presets to accelerate your workflow even further and see you next time.